Hi everybody, it's Dr. Meg Hayworth here, and I help women abuse survivors heal their histories and their health with holistic wellness solutions, including nutrition, mind-body medicine techniques, and uh, in dealing with environmental toxins. Um, uh, so it's, it's holistic from the inside out, every level of your being gets healing. So um, what I wanna to talk to you about today is uh, what to do in a healing crisis. You know, a healing crisis is when um, you've just received a diagnosis or you have persistent symptoms or maybe you have a flare-up after you already have a diagnosis. So you have an autoimmune disease and now you're in a flare-up. You have fibromyalgia and now you're in a flare-up. Um, and so uh, I've come up with this solution um, over many years of having dealt with over a dozen illnesses myself, including autoimmune disease fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, migraines, headaches. Um, so I, I've, disease is something I've dealt with a lot in my own body. And then also with my clients, I've been doing this work for over 20 years in holistic wellness. Um, so what I want to talk about, though, uh, today is something I've never done before. And um, I have always shared about my healing journey after I was done doing the healing. And then I would talk about, you know, what I went through. And this time I'm sharing something that is happening right now in real time. Something that I've been dealing with for the last four and a half years, ever since I was struck by lightning. Um, I was struck by lightning on Venice Beach and um, I have had what I call lightning headaches um, on the right side of my head. And, um, I have had um, sleeplessness and um, irritability, which let's face it, that's part of life, right? <laughs> um, uh, let's see, uh, I've had a number of different symptoms. Um, also sometimes dizziness, lightheadedness, especially in the morning, um, sometimes nausea. So, um, you know, I decided after it started to get more and more intense, um, I also have a like a, sort of a threshold where I can only do so many things before I go into a lightning headache and exhaustion. And it's not like chronic fatigue exhaustion. It's a whole different type of tired. It's, it's, it's sort of a brain tired. Um, and uh, my one of the neurologists that I worked with four years ago, he said, um, when you have a brain injury, because the lightning strike is a brain and nervous system energy uh, um, injury, uh, when you have that, that you need to honor your body's need to rest because the brain needs to rest in order to repair itself. And the brain takes a long time to heal. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's not something that's even going to happen in a few months. Um, it could take years to heal from an injury. Um, that's a brain injury. So, um, so I wanted to, to share with you um, that little background of what's going on with me, but also show you my process. Um, this is what I've done every single time, ever since I took my healing into my own hands when I was only 27 years old, when I finally said, um, after, you know, I was dealing with all these illnesses, I had uh, ulcers and irritable bowel and I had migraine headaches and TMJ, um, so bad I couldn't open my mouth sometimes for days and I would have to take my food through a straw. I had vertigo so bad I had to crawl across the floor, floor to get to the bathroom. Um, uh, and, you know, eventually I had fibromyalgia and chronic, chronic fatigue, as I men mentioned, um, and then uh, mixed connective tissue disease was, um, I tested positive twice for that. I never received the official diagnosis by the time I did all of my, what I'm about to share with you, <laughs> my process, because um, then I ended up uh, getting my diagnosis officially became fibromyalgia with chronic fatigue syndrome. I wasn't looking for a diagnosis. I was just looking to, to get better, to heal. Um, and that's what my life is all about, is healing and helping other, people's, other people heal. So I hope that my process will help you heal too. So here's what I'm doing. Um, so now I went to the neurologist because I wanted, actually I went to my primary care first because I knew I wouldn't be able to go to a neurologist without seeing my primary care because of the way Western medicine works. Um, 
or maybe it doesn't work. Um, so I went to her first because I knew I'd have to get a referral. And she, you know, listened to my symptoms. And then given what happened to me, being struck by lightning, she said, okay, you know, I think you have post-concussion syndrome. And it was pretty clear that's probably what the problem was. Um, and so, uh, she said, I would order an MRI for you to see what's going on in there, but I can't I have to send you to a neurologist and the neurologist has to order an MRI. Um, now I had already been warned by, uh, the head of the lightning strike survivors international support group. There is a thing for that, which I found like two days after I was struck. Cause I was just like, I did not know how to navigate that who does you know it's like not something you how many of you know somebody who was struck so um i learned from him that a lot of lightning strike survivors will have mris and nothing will show up on them because um it, there's nothing to be found now because my symptoms were increasing getting worse i was canceling things with friends um so that i could make sure that i could get all my work done and all of that trying to balance the energy um, expenditure because I I just keep getting it keeps getting harder for me um, to meter it out and that was really concerning so you know here I was that for me was a health crisis um, when I can't operate in a, a normal fashion um, uh, and you know and do my all my work and just do you know things that you know most people would do uh, go to events go to, you know, uh, workshops, things I've committed to. Um, and I started to cancel out on those things because I wasn't feeling well. Um, or not going out with friends because I wasn't feeling well. Because, you know, I knew I needed to rest. If I didn't rest, um, I would start to get the lightning headaches. And it would just get worse and intense. So so I go to the, the primary care. She refers me to the neurologist. I go to the neurologist. It was a very interesting, um, albeit maybe a little bit shocking, <laughs> shocking, a little lightning humor, um, situation. Um, I waited six weeks to even get the appointment. And in the six week time frame, the headaches were getting more intense. They were getting more localized. My, my head was burning more. I was really afraid, you know, and still kind of, you know, concerned, like, could there be a brain tumor in there? I hope not. Um, but, you know, something, of course, crossed my mind. Um, and so what happened was I go to the neurologist. Um, he listens to my symptoms. He gives me this brain quiz, um, like a memory quiz, because short-term memory. Um, I have what I call LADD, Lightning Attention Deficit Disorder. <laughs> I had great focus and attention before this happened, but after it was like, um, in my apartment, it looked like a bomb had blown up in there because I couldn't finish any tasks, like just basic things I couldn't finish. And I, on my computer, I would have like 20 tabs open up and I would jump from thing to thing to thing because I just couldn't focus. So, um, that's been, it's gotten markedly better, as you can probably tell just by me being able to talk about all of this. Um, and you know, my memory and recall and, 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 and um, vocabulary is still there for the most part. Um, so anyway, so back to uh, the neurologist. So I go in and he does the memory test and all that. And he, and he chooses not to order a test for me. Instead, he just, uh, an MRI. Instead, he decided, he said, I want to treat you for migraines, basically. Um, and it's not a migraine. I've had migraine headaches before. This is not the same thing. Um, I feel it deep in my head and it, it feels very localized, very centralized in there. Um, and, uh, and then there, the, there's pressure and sometimes it feels like there's like this fist tightening up in my head. Um, it's really kind of weird. Um, so anyway, so he didn't order the, order the MRI and I told him I'm not taking pharmaceutical drugs to suppress a symptom for a migraine because it's not what this is and um, I won't take them, that I prefer to do some kind of natural. So he said that there was a, a product called MIG relief, which is actually pronounced 
Mig Relief. It's a portmanteau, two words put together called portmanteau. I love portmanteaus. Um, and so it's migraine relief, mig relief, mig relief. Um, so I looked at the uh, ingredients on that product and it's feverfew, which is an herb um, that's used for headache. Um, and then uh, magnesium, because uh, he said there were minerals in it, I, I think is what he said. He didn't really know what was in it. <laughs> um, there were minerals in it, so magnesium was in it. Um, there was a third ingredient, but the problem with the product was the excipients that are in it. So excipients are added extra uh, uh, ingredients that they put in fillers, basically. And some of the excipients included carcinogenic uh, um, ingredients that I was already aware of, like polypropylene glycol or something like that, which they use as a preservative. And there were other fillers. I'm like, I'm not putting that into my body. That won't be supportive to my system just because I know how sensitive I, I am. Um, and I just don't want to do that to myself. So, um, uh, and then the other product, um, I looked into that as well, and it had some good ingredients. It was an organic product um, for also migraine relief, um, but it was um, it had ginseng in it. And because I have a problem with sleeplessness, I didn't want to have something stimulating for me like ginseng, because um, I know what it does to my my body. It just stimulates me a little bit too much. Like maybe in the morning, fine, but um, maybe not. You know, I just didn't want to. It's a chance that. So um, I had already been doing dietary interventions. I've been doing higher levels of uh, healthy fats. So, you know, avocados, nuts, seeds, those kinds of things. And then also, um, uh, um, uh, what was the other thing? Oh, fish oil, high, high doses of high quality fish oil, liquid fish oil that you can smell. Um, and I highly recommend ones that you can smell. I use... Um, a company called Zinzino out of uh, Sweden. And there's actually a link on my website at meghayward.com if you want to check that one out. So, so here's my process. I go natural first. Um, and then uh, if I have to go to Western medical interventions, then I will. I use Western medical mainly as a way to help me diagnose what the problem is so that I can then find somebody who has had it and healed it um, and or a clinic or a practice that's devoted to healing this particular issue. So um, you may have already seen in my podcast that I did a podcast with Dr. Titus Chu and um, he has a, a clinic in um, uh, Berkeley, California. Right now I'm in Santa Cruz, California. Um, and I'm on my way. I'm going tomorrow. So Brain Save is the name of his book by Dr. Titus Chu. And um, he said something that was in direct conflict with what the neurologist told me. The neurologist said, you know, there's nothing we can do. Um, once the brain is damaged, we can't reverse the damage, which is not true. And Dr. Titus Chu has been on the forefront of, of uh, discovering the ways that we can change the brain, um, the ways that we can heal the brain, and Brain Save, his program, is all about that. And so tomorrow, I'm going to take you guys on a trip with me. Um, we're going to, um, uh, to Berkeley, California from Santa Cruz, uh, where I'm staying tonight, and um, we're going to go to Dr. Titus Chu's clinic. And, uh, and we're going to check out his program, because I want to see if the program's right for me. Now, in the interim, I did something really cool. Um, so I was up here for a Sage Levine event. It's for women on, entrepreneurs. So check her stuff out. She's awesome. I really, really appreciated this, this three days that I've been here. But these amazing women are just changing the planet. Awesome. Um, so my roommate, um, my dear friend, uh, Carrie Marguerite, who's like a sister, or has become so in my life, um, she offered to do cranial sacral work. Now, cranial sacral therapy um, is uh, something that I checked out maybe 25 years ago. Um, it 
has a lot of scientific back, backing and efficacy behind it. Um, and I, I have always seen it as a modality that um, uh, is pretty close to medical while also still being uh, an, an energy medicine modality. Um, and so I'd had the work done on me many years ago and um, I wanted, she offered to do some work on this because she said something that really clicked with me that made a lot of sense. Um, that this, uh, um, I kept saying it felt like energy congestion, like the lightning never left my body out of my head. It came in through my right foot and up my right side and it never left my head and it just felt like it was bald in there all this time. That's the only way I could describe what was going on in those times where I would get overtired and, and um, it would feel like a fist in my head. Oh, I meant to mention uh, noises, like loud noises. I went to a Fleetwood Mac concert a couple of months ago. It took me days to recover. I couldn't sleep for days um, from the loud sounds. Um, so overstimulation, that's another thing. So if, if I want you to think about, you know, some of the symptoms that you might be, have. Um, if you ever had your head hit, uh, if you were an athlete in high school, um, if you, uh, you know, we've all hit our heads. You, your problems could be stem, uh, be rooted in post-concussion syndrome. So, um, they, because they, those problems last or they can surface years and years later. If you listen to my podcast with Dr. Titus Chu, my podcast is Get Well Soon. Go check it out on iTunes. And um, there's a, a podcast with him. He talks about his personal story of his own going through. And this is, I love to work with people who've been through what I'm going through and have healed it, you know, um, because these are the people that know what it feels like um, and that that relentlessly looked for solutions, which is exactly what I've done with my life. I'm so excited I get to do this to help people, to help you right now just by sharing this story. Um, so I hope it helps you. You know, if you have had um, any of the symptoms that I mentioned, um, uh, that it could be a brain trauma associated event going on, you know, that's going on in your body now. Um, and these symptoms again can surface many years later. So four and a half years later, the, the lightning injury healed significantly. And then uh, it, I started, it started to worsen. So um, that's when I was like, you know, and I can't, you know, I can't mess with this. This is my brain. So, um, so anyway, one of the things that the uh, neurologist said was you can't heal the brain. Dr. Titus Chu says, oh, yes, you can. He has his program at Berkeley. It's, it's like a boot camp situation. I'll find out more about it tomorrow and share it with you. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's the, the main process that I wanted you guys to know about. Um, so, first of all, be conservative about your, your care. Go natural if you possibly can. Um, find somebody who's had what you have and healed it. Um, look at uh, the, the different uh, uh, types of therapies available for you. Um, I would encourage you to never think of your illness or your uh, symptoms as physical only because they're not. You are a holistic system. You have your mind, you have your body, you have your personality, you have your energy system, you have your soul, you've got the whole thing. Um, and all of those units work together. And, and so when you look in all of those parts of the self and you look at different types of modalities and different types of, of um, practitioners that can help you with the different layers, um, that's when you will get the best healing possible. Um, uh, for me personally, I've found that, that transpersonal psychology going into in the mind body medicine techniques that I learned and then created my own off of, um, those were the things that I've seen heal, like miraculous results 
or what people would call a miracle. Um, I just think it's, it's really once you activate that part of you and you release the thing that's stuck in your system, stuck in your body, your cellular memory changes. It's like you, you get to create a new, new memories inside of yourself <laughs> and, and your cell tissue really seriously changes. Um, uh, what we say to ourselves, what we think, what we feel has significant impact on our, our daily health. Um, so here we go. So uh, again, um, the process is look for somebody who's had it and healed it. Um, I mean, there are people that have healed things that everyone thinks you can't heal, like MS, uh, Dr. Terry Walls, um, Lucura. She healed MS. She was, she's a doctor, was not able to walk across her treatment room, but healed herself. And I've, I've seen her in person. I've met her. <laughs> she was walking just fine. <laughs> she's in brilliant health. Um, so just know there's a lot of possibilities out there. Uh, so for now, um, I just want to leave you with the most important thing I've learned along my journey of healing. And that's, it's one thing that leads to another, actually. It's take your healing into your own hands. So what that means is don't be your diagnosis. Don't identify with it. Don't choose it as your identity. It's not who you are. It's just something you're dealing with. And take that healing into your own hands by, by activating your intuition. We all have this ability. It's just your internal guidance system. It's that thing that says yes or no or right or wrong or left or right. Um, for many of us, of us, it's kind of clogged up. We can't really get to it. Um, and that, activating that, um, asking yourself, you know, does this feel right? You know? Um, you don't have to believe everything the doctor tells you. Um, you, can, you can make a different choice. And I'm, I'm not saying be in denial about what he's saying and choose denial. I'm just or she, what she's saying, you know, just like, okay, that's their paradigm and that's their world. And that's fine. They do great work, but there are hundreds, if not thousands of different types of healing modalities that can help you heal your body. So, um, if you need help with any of that, I offer free consultations and I would love to talk to you. Um, you can just sign up for one at meghayworth.com, M-E-G-H-A-W-O-R-T-H.com, and uh, ask me questions. You know, I love helping people out. Um, I am getting busier and busier, um, and so get me now. You know, this is March of 2019. You know, I answer every email, answer every message. Um and there's going to come a time I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'm saying take advantage of me now. <laughs> um, after having healed over a dozen illnesses and lightning strike and, and chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and uh, drowning, uh, sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotion, emotional abuse, divorce, loss of a child. Uh, it's just like, I, I've been through so many things and I can help you with so many different things in your life. So, um, hit me up, talk to me. I'm here for you. So, cause I love to help people heal. That's my great passion in life. And I hope that this, uh, this video, which is maybe a bit long, <laughs> but I hope it'll help you get well now.